Today, we're gonna to take a look at the K1 Max from Creality. It's my first Creality printer since the CRM4, and I'm hoping it's a step up. So, see you guys inside. Hey guys, welcome to today's video. As I said, we're taking a look at the K1 Max, Creality's large format rapid printer. Now, this printer has a lot of cool specs, 300 by 300 by 300 build area, which is huge. That's even bigger than the X1 Carbon from Bamboo Labs. So we're going to take a look at this. We're going to get it out of the box. We're going to set it up. We're going to get kind of my first impressions and see what it looks like before I start my first task with it. So without further ado, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the box on the floor and I'll join you guys again when this printer is out of the box and on the table. All right, guys. So there's the machine out of the box. A lot of glass, a lot of wobble. A lot of parts. We got rubber feet, we got a power cord, I gotta put the handle on the door, we've got to attach to the display. Now, there is your spare hot end needle. Love it, love that. And here's something I am gonna say about Creality. Thank you for listening. They sent a full spool of filament. Usually we either get these half spools or we get these little baggy spools. I think it's really kind of a stupid thing to send with a new printer. Um, I think it diminishes the experience. This allows the user to have a true experience, especially for something that's about over $800. This allows for a good experience. Um, I think all the material providers should do this. I know Bamboo, they send three, like 250 half spools, which is nice too, because it's different material types. But this is the hyper series that's meant for this rapid printing printer. So, and then of course you get all the goodies. You get your snippers, you get your wrench, your Allen wrenches, your screwdriver, your grease, your thumb drive, your glue stick, your cutter, and your declogger. Um, a lot of goodies in here. Did they step up the thumb drive? Yeah, they did. That makes me happy. Uh, you got your snippers, which is incredibly important for all this. You gotta have good snippers. Um, and again, Allen wrenches, sockets, all the little bits you need to work on the printer. Now, one of the things too, and what I hate about these printers is why, and this is the spool, spool holder that screws into the back. Why are the spools in the back? Seriously, guys? I have to pull the printer out every time I want to change the spool. That seems silly, doesn't it? Uh, but I can't fault Creality for this either bamboo does it but again why is it back here when it could be over here where I can actually access this spool the input is right here seriously um, so there might be a spool side holder that gets put on here that may be for another video when I upgrade that so there's a spot back here that just screwed twists in and we got to put the display on which let's take a look at the display real quick before I go through and we'll start putting a bunch of stuff together. There's our display, very nice, lightweight, clean, clicks into place, very clean, like it. So, and then once I have everything kind of clicked in place, I've got to go in here, and there's a few screws I got to undo, especially here, here, and here, to release the build plate. Um, those screws are holding the build plate in place, USB thumb drive in the front, thank you. That is, I hate machines that don't have that in front. Um, again, when we're, one of the things that drives me insane about the functionality of the machine is it should be usable in position. I shouldn't have to move stuff around. I shouldn't have to pull it forward. I should be able to access everything. Uh, thumb drive in front, fantastic spool in the back. Everybody's doing it. Yes, like Bamboo Labs, the AMS puts them on top, stuff like that. The K1 Max, I will have to take a look and see if I have a I don't know if this one does the filament changing. I know the K1C and the K1 does. I don't know if the Mac does. Max does. That may be a component I just need to buy later on. So, but let me get this stuff put together and I'll join you guys back again and give you a little bit more input on the machine. All right, guys, so I've got her all assembled. Screws are all out, thumb drives in. We are powered on and ready to go. I'm gonna set mine into English and hit next. I've removed those screws already, so I can hit okay, and, well, and hit okay. I agree, next. Now we're gonna look for Wi-Fi, which I love that this machine has Wi-Fi. 
and I'm going to scroll in front because you guys don't need to know my Wi-Fi password. Hit enter. And we're going to get connected to my Wi-Fi here and get the machine connected to the Wi-Fi, which is awesome. And we'll hit next again. Oop, I just need to hit next. I'm already connected. Next. Uh, wants my time zone. I am Eastern. Uh, <laughs> I don't have Creality Cloud on my phone, and unfortunately, I'm using my phone. Uh, don't really want to do this, so I'm just going to hit next. Then I'm going to put it through its self check. So, do not touch the printer. Let it run its self check. When it's done its self check, I'll catch back up with you guys. But the handles are on. Own lighting system inside. The machine has got a lot of really cool capabilities. Cooling really nice stuff in here so we're gonna let it go through its process and I'll catch back up with you here in a minute all right guys so we're back with the k1 max so I connected it to the internet we ran the first uh, self calibration which went fine everything worked good then we had to do a firmware update which it downloads and does all itself now unlike prior old machines and then I've done a few of the built-in test prints with the filament that came with the printer and they're good they're not super fantastic but they're good and there's a lot of good quality here I mean this thing was done in an hour and a half this guy took maybe 25 minutes now that's straight out of the box me doing no real calibration or anything like that it's really good quality for an FDM printer I love that within the app we have access to time-lapsing the built-in camera right here um, very similar to the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. Um, and it has a lot of good features. I definitely recommend getting the Creality app and connecting your printer to it. A lot of cool stuff that you can download from Creality and print pre-sliced. But also one of the things that I like is the K1 Max is compatible with the Bamboo Slicer. Um, so I honestly can slice for almost all of my stuff within the Bamboo Slicer, which is really cool. Um, of course, there's Cura profiles. There's... Um, I believe even Lynchy Pro now has profiles for this FDM printer um, as that slicer moves to doing both FDM and uh, resin. So overall, good quality machine, a bit loud for my liking. The fans are pretty loud. Um, this is not something that I would leave in a living room or something like that. Definitely needs to go in a room behind a closed door so you don't have to listen to it all day. The, the noise dampening feet were a great addition. Uh, Open up in here, the built-in lighting, uh, built-in table, magnetic smooth bed is really nice. Um, and I did these prints without glue, um, which is really kind of nice. My complaints. Filament feeder is on the back. Why? Why? Wh who thought this was a good design? Um, because now I have to get behind my printer anytime I want to feed in new filament. I don't like that. Um, so one of the one of the models was a filament swivel that hopefully I can use out here on the side to load my filament that way. But I still got to get back here to feed my filament in. Um, I think that's a huge miss. Um, and but honestly, the Bamboo X1 Carbon same problem. The single filament arm is on the back. The AMS solves that problem because it puts the filament up on the top, but it is just kind of a common problem. But at an $850-ish dollar price point, good machine. I'm actually quite impressed. Um, I had to do no real calibration. Um, I didn't have to go find the Z offset and all of that. The printer does all of that for you. Basically, it's ready to print through the calibration methodology. So definitely, I'm, I'm liking that a lot. Um, I did have a problem with it feeding the filament in the back that it pulled it onto the spool arm. It made a pretty good tangled mess of it, but that was pretty easily fixed. Even though it was set correctly, it still did that. Um, so I'm gonna try the feed from the side here, um, probably on a test print. It comes with five test prints, which is pretty cool. Um, you can look at what's on the USB drive, which has three of them and then has supplemental infrastructures and just kind of some of the other stuff on there. 
Um, I like that I get a full thumb drive, that I have a full USB port. I'm not a huge fan of the SD cards, I'll be honest. Um, and like I said, you can slice and upload through the app, through the CR scan, or not CR scan, the Corality app. Um, so really nice features. Um, I think I'm really gonna like this program printer because one of the features that this has over the Bamboo Lab, all the Bamboo Labs is build plate size. All the Bamboo Lab printers are stuck at 256 by 256 by 256. This one I get a 300 by 300 by 300. I almost have the same build size as a CR10 in this machine. And that's what catches my attention is, if I wanna do a full Mandalorian helmet, I can in one print run with this machine. I can't do that with the X1 Carbon and have it fit my big head. So definitely it's got some perks and it's got some advantages, but it's also got some disadvantages. Um, that some of those we can remedy with just minor upgrades and different things like that. Um, like figuring out how to get the spool onto the side. In all honesty, I may rig a feeder so it can take a five kilogram spool. Um, I tend to do that. I like the five kilogram spools because um, I like to print big projects and this guy's gonna be doing just that. So kind of one of those things to keep in mind. But overall, I like the printer and I will give you guys more updates as I use this printer. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Let us know. And if you're new to the channel here and wanna see what's going on and keep up with us, make sure you hit that subscribe button and join the crew. And also consider becoming a member there's several tiers and all that all that support goes into help me helping me get machines like this to talk about them and show them on the channel and work with them and help you guys get to printing because that's where we go and that's what we do here. So thank you guys and we'll see you in the next video.